When a drone runs out of battery, it really depends on the amount of money you spent on it as to what actually happens. If you've got a higher end drone with lots of fancy automated flying stuff, it can do two things. It can either return to home or it can auto land um, and it will sort of like look after itself. If you've got a lower end drone, one that doesn't have all of the fancy sort of like shot, automated shot stuff or the uh, autonomous landing things, it will just either sort of slowly fall out of the sky or it will just stop and it will descend very quickly. So uh, that can severely damage a drone because essentially it's falling out of the sky. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all of the exact things that the drones do and also how I make sure that I don't end up with a low battery which can damage my drone and that I'm always home with plenty of battery to spare like a good boy. This video is based on an article on DroneFlyingPro.com, so go check it out at DroneFlyingPro.com. I'll put a link in the description to the exact article, and it's full of more information than I could squeeze into this video, so go check it out. And if this video has been helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel like it. If you have a drone from DJI, from Autel, from Unique, it almost certainly has an auto landing function. And so what happens is, is throughout the process of flying, as soon as you take off, it records the GPS uh, locations of the takeoff spot. And then throughout the flight, it is constantly monitoring how far away from that uh, area, that takeoff point it is, and also how much battery it's using. So then it's sort of performing these calculations to a point where it has this kind of return to home battery level. So it knows that if it passes this battery level, it needs to just return to home and it will do that automatically. And you can set that in the DJI Go For app or your app for your certain um, uh, manufacturers. So I'll just turn on the so that's on, the remote controller for the DJI Mavic Air. And this is what it sounds like when it's returning home. And so you'll hear that continuously as the drone comes home. Now here's the issue. So I've sort of had my, my drone return to home and uh, this noise can get pretty annoying and you can turn it off, I think. I can't remember the series of buttons. But the problem that I wanna talk about is if you push the big red pause button, it can actually just stop the, that doesn't do it at all. All right, so if you push the return to home button, and I think on the pause as well, um, once it's actually connected to the drone, um, you can actually stop the drone from returning to home. Now the thing is the drone will just stop where it is. If you let go of any of the controls on the DJI drones, it will just completely stop and hold its position. Now that is using up battery and uh, it is quickly running out of battery and it may, be not, it may not be able to return to the takeoff point. So I recommend that if it does start returning home that you just let it do its thing until it's very close and you can just descend um, on your own. I've done that a few times. Um, or if you do cancel the return to home thing, that you just sort of like keep heading home as quickly as possible. Don't try to squeeze in those extra few minutes. Um, and if you do decide that you do not want the uh, drone to do the return to home and you do want to explore a little bit more, you do have to be aware that you may have to uh, land somewhere where you didn't take off. And unfortunately, once the drone reaches a certain level of battery, it will just start descending automatically. And so you do not want to be over water, over bushes, on top of trees, near power lines when it starts descending automatically. So um, those are the things that can go wrong. But if you've got a drone that has auto landing, then uh, it kind of takes away a lot of the anxiety. And as long as you're keeping your eye on the battery level, um, I think you'll be fine. Okay, lower cost drones, ones that kind of edge into the sort of toy region, um, they typically have a much shorter battery life. So they're normally sort of, you know, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. But if the battery runs out on them, they simply fall out of the sky, um, which is terrifying. So if you do have a lower end drone that doesn't have um, 
real-time information about the battery on the screen, on the controller, or you can't tell, um, one thing I recommend you do is start a stopwatch, a countdown timer on your phone, and you just return home. Um, and then, you know, if you want to, you can slowly extend that time if you feel like you're not getting enough time. Um, but do take notice of uh, when the drone starts to kind of struggle in the air. Um, and so, yeah, it is sort of worth spending a little bit more money on drones. So don't cheap out because what you're really doing, what you're really buying when you buy a drone, especially a higher end drone or a consumer um, level drone is you are buying confidence that that drone will return to home and all of your fancy software inside the drone will make sure your drone is as safe as possible. So um, yes, do, do consider spending a little bit more money if you do want to send your drone like over water, over um, really kind of high trees or, you know, off into the distance. You know, toys really struggle with this and uh, investing in your drone, you're investing in confidence. Okay, so here are the things that I do to make sure that my drone returns safely every single time I fly it. So the first thing is I make sure that I have at least two fully charged batteries that I charge up the night before. So I just plug them in, I leave them overnight, and then in the morning, I do not take them off the charger until approximately like 10 minutes before I'm due to fly uh, or leave my house to go to the uh, flight location. And that just means I've got two fully charged batteries that are ready to go, um, and sometimes, when I turn up, now the DJI Mavic Air, which is just over here, it does have some issues with cumbers calibration. At the moment, I need to go in and also calibrate the visual um, sensors and, uh, and visual positioning system. So sometimes you can use up a fair bit of battery just troubleshooting, which is why I always bring two, because the last thing you want to do is squeeze in those uh, awesome shots when the noise is coming from the remote controller and you're just not turn that off, um, and you're just not able to, yeah, do everything you want with the battery that's remaining. So I always take two, and then if I spend too much time calibrating or messing around, or I don't get quite the shots that I want, it's no issue because I've got another one fully charged and it's fine. Um, when you fully charge up these batteries, if you leave them sat for a long time, some of them have smart sort of battery capabilities, which essentially discharges the battery over time because lithium polymer batteries do decay if you um, store them at 100% charge. So they'll self-protect and they'll discharge slowly. So that's why it's important to have them recently charged, um, which I always do. Um, the second thing is, is I'm always running with uh, batteries that haven't completed more than 500 cycles, and that's very important because after about 500 cycles or probably about two or three years old, the batteries start not holding their charge as much. Um, they discharge much faster, and so using fresh batteries will help a lot. Um, another thing I do is I just look after my batteries. Now, I'm in Australia, so things can get pretty hot, so I make sure my batteries don't sit in hot places if I can help it. Sometimes I can't help but you know be out in the sun because it's an, it's an outdoor activity. But one thing I highly recommend is that uh, you do not leave your batteries in a hot car. You take your batteries with you. Um, you make sure that you store them at about sort of like 60% discharge or you at least let them discharge if they're smart batteries. And uh, yeah, any fluctuations in temperature should be minimized because the lithium polymer composite inside isn't as stable as say a laptop top battery. So that's how I make sure that my batteries are performing tip top condition all the time. And the last thing I, I really do and I really recommend you do is get familiar with the sort of information that is being presented to you on the app. The app that comes with all of these drones will show you and protect you and there'll be warnings. And so one thing I do is always make sure that I'm familiar with what information is being shown on the app. Now, it can be a little bit overwhelming because you've got like GPS data, you've got battery data, you've got return to home data, you've got camera and video data. And so sometimes just looking at this screen can make it very, very sort of confusing and overwhelming. But one thing I always do is make sure that I know exactly where the return to home um, uh, time is being shown. And on the DJI uh, Go4 app, it's a little H in a yellow circle. 
Um, and I make sure that I understand exactly what that means and I know how to cancel a return to home if I must, if I notice that the drone's gonna get itself into a fair bit of mischief because this drone doesn't have sensors on the side. So if I'm doing side stuff, I have to make sure that uh, yeah, it can actually escape from where I'm getting when I push that return to home. That the return to home set point is at least above the smallest tree, uh, sorry, the largest tree in the area. So that's uh, set for me at 60 meters. And uh, all of those things means that my my drone returns to home safely every single time. So there we have it. That's what happens when a drone runs out of battery. Let me know in the comments what you would add. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and I shall see you in the next video.